Okay, so this is RT623, and I just started recording. So this is our course website, right? You are seeing here, and if you actually go here, if you select this menu, there is a session called, I mean, this is uh, in Korean, but this is the uh, uh, recorded. So if you click this part, you can see, okay, this is, I'm sorry, this is my wife. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. 네, 맛있겠네요. 네, 맛있겠네요. 이제 30개. 네, 아무튼. All right. So this is the um, my um, yeah website. And if you go here, there is a menu and record it. So if you click here, you'll have an access to the recorded lecture, which is recorded using this LMS system. Okay. If I have to record the video and share it, because I cannot do the live lecture. You will have access to the video here, or um, you can uh, watch in my personal YouTube channel. 그죠? 구독과 좋아요 해주시면 좋고요. All right. So that is it, the situation. And there is some reading materials. I think I gave the instruction. So there is this textbook. Uh, both are. I mean, this one is fairly good. So if you have. Uh, I mean, you can study by yourself. I'm not. I'm not gonna give out the uh, exact reading assignment. I may gonna give you the reading assignment in some papers, some journal papers. But I mean, this one is your just material for your study. Um, uh, I may take some quiz or survey. I'm tr still trying to learn this system. Um, but if I have to. Do some survey or a short quiz as we go on. I'll use this menu. Okay. All right. So that I think that's it. All right. So yeah. So okay. Um, yeah. I'll stop the sharing. Okay. okay. All right. So I'll share this slide for today. So in the last lecture. Right, I gave out the uh, introduction to the course, and I talked about the coronavirus mask or some other uh, very general introduction to this micro and nano engineering. Okay, so oh sorry, yeah, I mean this should be changed, but like yeah, right. So if you think about it, right, introduction to um, right. So so if you look at here, right. Um, actually, if you took this micro nano engineering about um, uh, three years ago or two years ago, the content will be same. It's a different course, but yeah, I mean that's the situation. But anyways, all right. So, so if you look at here, I talked about like why nano is cool, like nano is awesome, nano is great. But I'll go into a little bit more of uh, detail about why people are interested in nano. Okay, so nano. Um, I mean, it can it, now it may sound it's an old field, but like starting of 1990s and in early 2000, right? There was this big boom of nanoscience and engineering, right? With the development of inspection tools, right? Electron microscopes and also all these semiconductor devices, there was this big boom of nano and actually there was a lot of money going into this area. Okay. So yeah, it sounds cool. There was a lot of funding. Um, but the real reason that people are interested in nano is that, for example, for the uh, materials. When the same material becomes a small size, or if they become in a length scale of nanometers, their properties, 물성이라고 하죠, 물질의 특징, right? Their material properties changes. Okay, it becomes different from their bulk property. So you can see this as a so maybe say um, a mechanical, thermal, electrical, or even optical properties depend on size within the nanometer regime. Okay. So, so this is called the scaling effect, okay, and there's also so this uh, term called 
quantum confinement energy of nanostructures. Okay, so there is some this confinement effect, right, which differs the material property and nanoscale from the large bulk scale. Okay, so there is this term scaling comes in. Okay. So so when the material becomes very small, we see a very unique or very different or sometimes much improved property from its bulk material. And also it's a relevant device limit, right? So if you are maybe making the material using the chemistry or maybe some physical method, right? In both synthetic capsule or natural systems, system, the nanometer scale represents a limit to which most functional structures might be scaled, right? So if you look into our body system, right? The cells, right? Red blood cells, mitochondria, right? All these smallest biologically functional structures, right? Virus, right? Uh, and also the synth synthetic, right? Maybe like a water molecule, right? Uh, uh, piezoelectric nanopowders, right? And if you look into very small scale, these functional structures has a size limit. So it cannot be smaller than a few nanometers or even like a few angstroms. Right? So there is this limit. And that is because the size of individual atoms, right? They are in the order of angstroms. Or for big atoms, it can be go up to nanometers. Right? So it's the building block size are very small. So that is why we are interested in nanometers, right? And of course, if you are working in the field nano, right, nanomaterials, nanobiology, or, or, or cell culture, or uh, nanorobotics, right, the main reason we are doing this research is because we want to discover some unexpected science or technology, right? Right. I mean, it's a, it's this field is multi interdisciplinary nature of nanoscience, and working at interface between and bringing together different fields. Okay, and this can often lead to revolutionary revolutionary advances. Right. So, as I said in the previous lecture, in all six different departments in our school, in every department there is a several professors. In each department, there are several professors working in the field of nano. Okay. All right. So let's look at in more detail. So let's look at what's happening. Let's look at the physics. Bullies again, Tixong at the nano scale. Right. So if you if you go down to nano scale, right, there is a significant surface area. Okay. It means extremely high surface area to volume ratio. Okay. So our body, right? There is a volume in our body, right? I mean, I'm big, right? So my volume is really high. Right? Um, my daughter, right? She weights about like uh, one fifth of myself. Right? I mean, her volume is small. But if you actually look at the surface area of our body, right, the change can be smaller than the actual difference between the volume, right? So, so when you shrink the same shape or same size into much smaller scale, right, then this surface area to volume ratio dramatically changes. Okay, so there is a lot, a lot, a lot of surface area and nanoscale. That means the effect or the event happening at the surface area dominates. Okay, that effect becomes really, really important uh, for uh, this kind of uh, uh, this scale. Okay, and also it's a small mass, right? When mass becomes small, our size becomes small, the mass is small. So we can say the gravitational force, uh, becomes negligible. Okay. Instead, all these other forces which are present, 
right? Electromagnetic force, electrostatic force, thermal gradient induced flow or, or convection, or um, Van der Waals force, all these force becomes dominant, right? It takes over to the gravitational force, right? Of course, we can feel some electrostatic force in our skin or in our head, right? When the when the weather is dry and if you rub your hair, you can feel the force, right? But but our gravitational force is much more dominant when we're really big. But when the size becomes small, if you see these uh, buoyant uh, dust, right? When things get small gravitational force is negligible, right? So there's also this departure from the continuum regime, right? Continuum regime means that uh, the system's behavior can be expected using a continuous equation, right? Maybe it can be differential equation, uh, partial differential equation, or even linear function, right? So you can solve the energy transfer or thermodynamics or the electromagnetic force calculation you can use equation to do that in general, right? But when the system gets really small, then this quantum confinement effect kicks in, right? So all these carriers, energy carriers, photons, electrons, or even photons, right? They are confined in a space uh, rather than a free rather than free to move in bulk of the material. So there is this change in uh, materials property. Okay. And again, surface property changes. So maybe there is more rapid chemical reaction. Also, maybe some detection of chemical agent. Okay. There is large surface so it can absorb large amount of this radiation heat energy right so we will learn about all of these topics throughout the course again okay? okay so it's a very broad range but i'll do my best to introduce each concept uh, as uh, simple as i can and if you think uh, some of the explanation is not sufficient you can always ask more or you can request me to explain more a certain topic okay so okay all right so if you look at here so we learn about the physics right but so we are using this physics and also these materials but the main thing is that if you make things small okay that means you will require less force to move components okay so that means low power consumption and it's energy efficient and also uh, you can put more devices or more systems if they're small in a given volume so you can actually save money and also put much more function into the device All right so if you look at here this was the first phone developed at the Bell Laboratory, right? Or not, maybe I'm wrong, right? The initial purpose was the, uh, the uh, offline, it was the, uh, the uh, communication, right? The only function was receiving your voice, right? Receive sound, deliver to the other phone, and also receive uh, sound, and also give it and give this audio information to you. So that was the purpose. But with the development of all these nano components, micro components, uh, MEMS, microelectromechanical system, right? Now we have these smartphones, which has a lot of functions, right? Now we can use, I mean, everyone, I believe that I can guarantee that all of you are using phone more than an hour every day. So, right, I believe that there is someone using phone right at this moment. So, you're going to be using the phone. So, you're going to be using the phone. Anyone? 
okay? I was joking, so please do not get offended. But yeah, right? So that is the thing, right? Every, this market, right, is cost-driven, right? Everyone in the world wants to make more money, especially large company. They have to make profit so they can give out that profit to employees, also invest that money to R&D to develop better products, right? And also, if you make things small, they become more responsive, okay? Which means, which means, so, so yeah, I mean, what, what I'm saying is like, if you make a stuff smaller, right? Myself, if I go outside, even though there is wind, I, I mean, I can't stay still, right? The wind cannot blow me away. But if I take out the tissue and throw it away, the tissue will fly around because of this wind. So when you make something small, something light, right, then they become more responsive, which goes to they become much more sensitive to outside stimuli. So physical stimuli or, or optical input, acoustic sound, right, uh, temperature change, all this is all these can be measured with a very high resolution using nanoscale products okay so what so people have developed various way to uh, make this materials okay and if you look at here there are two approaches one is top down and one is bottom up so top down is here. You start from the bulk material, you ground it to the powder, right? And you also make nano powders, right? So this is top down, which you start from the large material. Okay. Semiconductors. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll use a tablet next time. So I'm sorry. Semiconductors. And also, um, so semiconductors or this microfabrication is basically most of the process is top down. Okay. There's also a process called bottom up, and this process includes a lot of chemistry. Yeah. So you, it has a lot of synthesis. So, right, okay. Okay, so either top down or bottom up, there are some also intermediate process, but these are the basically two. So if you look at more closely, so this is the photo of our department after the uh, annual sports meeting, Undong I think this picture was about, um, yeah, I think this was about like four years ago. I should update this picture. But let's think about it, like bottom up, right? Our body is a building block. 우리 몸을 구성하는 제 작은 요소들 are proteins, DNA, phospholipids, right? And they form single cell, right? And when they cell gathers, it becomes human. And when a human gathers, there is a group of people. So, so the so the so this is kind of a bottom up, right? You start from small thing and go to the bigger thing. It's very similar for the actual devices or products. So if you look at here, there are nano wires and nano clusters. Using these materials or structures, you make devices and electrical circuits, and then you move on to the integrated nano systems, so electronics, photonics, biology, and medicine. So that is bottom up. The top down is much more, um, I'll say, um, uh, much more or organized and controllable. And I'll just explain why. So if you look at here, the microfabrication. I believe that many of you have entered Clean Room 
or doing the microfabrication for your project. So if you look at here, right, there is this design pro design phase and also there's this fabrication phase, right? We start from the silicon wafer fabrication, right, and do some lithography etch deposition and you do a lot of this cycle and then you build the final product device. And for this, you need the materials, right? You need to deposit thin conductor, some metal, metals, right? 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 Or, or implant, deposit, right? You're depositing or diffuse other materials for silicon doping, right? So it, 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 it includes chemistry, material science, physics, right? All these are used for develop of fundamental concepts and processes. And then we use a lot of ideas, right, to apply and use these concepts and build the system to do all these, right? So this is the top-down approach and the silicon or CMOS or semiconductor microfabrication is a very good example of top-down approach. All right, so now, nowadays, everyone is using at least one nano or micro device, okay? I mean, so your cell phone, the monitor that you're, you're looking at, right? Your clothes, uh, if you took the vitamin or drug, right? And they are all contain this nano Technology, right but when you go back to about uh, 65 years ago the very first electronic device was built and that was the first transistor right developed by this John Bardeen and Walter Britton at the Bell Laboratories okay and the manager is William Shockley Shockley right okay and they won the Nobel Prize and this was the first transistor, right? It looks really big, right? But with the birth of this nanotechnology, right? Oh, yeah. And they also developed this first integrated circuit. So this was the first uh, transistor um, um, integrated uh, 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 circuit system, right? Okay. So um, they, um, right, and, and, and they, he won the Nobel Prize. And actually, They built this company set called Fairchild Semiconductor, which later became Intel, right? So this very first IC developed into the one of the largest uh, uh, company, the chip company in the world, right? So there was this development, right? Everyone is focusing on new functions or new functionality, and then now these ICs are everywhere, right? There are like billions of transistor, right? In this single Intel Core i7 chip, and you can make hundreds of billion or even more uh, transistor-based IC uh, transistors in uh, this silicon wafer. So this is silicon wafer. All right, using this technology. Okay, so trillions of tiny transistors are made on a very large silicon wafer. So this is the uh, uh, main technology. Okay. So here is the Moore's law. The number of transistor on integrated circuit trips. Okay. So this is the number of transistors in a chip. Right. So if you look at here, starting from 1970, there were there were the chip only had about thousand transistors, but now it has increased up to wow, like 50 billion chips in a single uh, 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 chip. Right. And this, if you look at here, this is log plot. Right. This is this is log scale plot. So this 
increase in number of transistors in a single chip is exploding. And this is possible with the development of nanotechnology. Okay. So, uh, the 재료, 재료, right? The materials, um, fabrication, 공정, uh, and also packaging, all these nanotechnology has been combined to get to this point. And this is still going up, right? Many people said in, in middle of 2010 or, or, or a, a few years ago, many people said that the era of silicon will end in 10 or 20 years. And they said this Moore's law will saturate a certain point. But these people at, at Intel, at Samsung, at Qualcomm, they all come up with come up with these new technology. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. To keep up this Moore's law. Okay. Yep. So. So now let's get back to the today's topic, scale, right? When we talk about nano, right, everything has a concept of size, right? Size has its own dimension, right? And usually when an object has three-dimensional structure or even one-dimensional, two-dimensional, we can say, oh, the size is big, or you can say size is small. Okay. The standard. When we say size, the standard can be, uh, I mean, I mean, yeah. So, so when we say size, we can quantify this size, and that is these length units, meters, centimeters, trons, millimeters, nano, pico, or inches, right, feet, yard. So there are this length scale, right, and if you see, in a wide range of scale, starting from one centimeter to 0.1 nanometer, there are so many natural things existing. Okay, ant, kyoruk, dust mite, uh, fly ash, human hair, red blood cells, ATP synthesis, right? All these, right? All these. Right, has sorry. Right, all these has this um, length scale, okay. And if you look at here, things man-made. Now people get made in all these range as well. Head of a pin, uh, MEMS devices, uh, lens, some self-assembled biological system, a nanotube, carbon nanotube. So people are also making this range and pushing it down to the smaller scale, okay? So everything has scale. And for scale, there is a concept called scaling loss. Okay. So miniaturizing machine and physical system is an ongoing effort because people want more intelligent, robust, multifunctional and low cost devices. Okay, and this is called miniaturization. And when we size the, when we change the size and especially go down to the very small scale, the physical systems and properties have they have unique scaling dependencies. Their behavior changes and there has a very strong scaling dependencies. So the scaling law should be considered before the design of any micro and nano systems, MEMS, batteries, and so on. So scaling in physics, I have mentioned that many physical phenomena, such as gravitation, force, acceleration, torsion, um, heat transfer, mass, all these physics scales differently with dimension L. Okay. 
So assuming geometric similarity, okay, there is a surface tension for which is the force per unit length. Because of 표면 장력이라고 해야 되나요? 우리가 말. It's a scale of length, right? It's a force per unit length, right? So the unit should be newton per meter. Okay, so it scales with L, right? If the length increases twice, the surface tension increases twice. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Give me a second. Okay. And also, if you think about heat transfer, right, this is the famous the, the law, right, heat transfer, right, the law of conduction, right? If you look at here, the rate of heat transfer, right, okay, is a, pro, is a function of thermal conductivity times area divided by distance. So if there is like a parallel plate, I'm sorry. So if there's like a, if there is this block, right? And if you apply hot temperature, right? And the other part is cold. Let's say this surface here. Cold. Okay. Then we can calculate the rate of heat transfer from hot to cold. 그러니까 얼마나 빨리 열 에너지가 전달이 되는지 온도 차가 발생할 때, right? We all know the law of thermodynamics. All energy, right? I mean, energy transfer moves from high temperature to low temperature, right? And this is called the heat transfer. So this is the equation here. And if you look at here, the rate, there is more heat transfer if the area is large, okay? If you touch an ice with your fingertip or if you touch with your palm, right, you'll feel much more cold temperature with your palm, right? So it is a function of area, okay? The compression, elongation, stiffness, right, is also a function of area, right? Thicker rope, it's hard to pull. Very thin rope, it's easy to break, right? So all these stiffness or mechanical or even this transfer characteristic is a function of area, okay? Mass equals volume times density, right? So mass is a function of volume, L to the cube. So all these things, physical phenomena, right? Heat transfer, mass, uh, stiffness, surface tension, they are all function of different length scales, all right? So let's look at here. So when we talk, when we uh, think about this nanoscale materials, we should do some dimensional analysis, okay? In engineering and science, dimensional analysis is the analysis of the relationships between different physical quantities by identifying their fundamental dimensions and units of measure and tracking these dimensions as calculations or comparisons are performed, okay? So basically what you are doing is you are doing some simple calculation to see how physical quantities change as dimension change. So, so what happens to mass when you increase the volume twice? Okay. What happens to this breaking force or this failure point of this rubber band if you increase the uh, diameter or the cross section uh, 10 times. So, so that's the dimensional analysis. Okay. So, yeah. So, as I said, as scale reduces, some physical quantities become dominant while others become negligible. 
Okay, so that is the main point I'm trying to say here. Okay, so let's see some examples. Okay. In nature, there is a scaling of trees. So if you look at tree, right, usually the short tree, the the 벚꽃이 영어로 뭐죠? Uh, the cherry blossom, right? There is a cherry blossom in this main street in our campus between the library and that um uh, 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 convergence Research Center, right? So if uh, CCRF와 독서, 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 독서실, 도서관 사이 벚꽃길이 있잖아요. When I first arrived at Digist, which was three years ago, or some of you have arrived here like four years ago, that tree was very, very skinny, right? But if you look at the tree now, it's, it's slight, it got slightly thicker. So if you, if, if so, so there's actually this law of the diameter of tree okay must increase as power of 1.5 okay All right so maybe this is the rule that oh to prevent this tree from buckling or being break so 너무 길기만 하면 이제 벗고 있죠 부러질 수 있죠 right there is this physical law of the diameter has to grow uh, this law right so young and small trees appear slender, and old and tall ones appear thick or stunted, right? So actually, when we see tree, we usually care about the height of the tree. But the diameter increases faster than the length in terms of like percentage change, okay? And also, okay. so if you look at here, the work done in lifting up is proportional to the mass and height of the jump. Okay, so if you look at here, work over mass, okay, as compared is a function of gravitational force times height. Okay, okay. Work is the, the, the force times distance, right? So so this is so gravitational acceleration times h, right? Uh, uh, yeah, so work over mass is proportional, right? So the power density, right? So this is power density. This is almost invariant with size of many animals. So in general rule, if an animal or living creature has more mass, usually they can do more work, right? And this is proportional to the L to the zero. So it's it's one, right? They are uh, 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 limited. So, so what I'm trying to say here is that the large person or small person, right, if we divide the person by their mass, right, their work density or power density is about the same. Okay. Okay. So if I gain more muscle, if I let's say if I increase 10% more of muscle in my body, then I can probably lift about 10% more. Okay. So that is what I'm trying to say here. Okay. So thus, so when animal jump, right? So the height of jump is comparable to your power density right more muscle you have you can jump higher right? okay this height of jump okay it becomes constant irrespective of the animal right so each animal right has the limit of jump okay right even though the animal becomes bigger their their mass increases so they can do more work right but at the same time they are becoming heavier Right, so there is the saturation point. Right? So a lot of animals, right, they can only jump about one or two meters, right? Okay, so this is also the law of scaling, right? Uh, the buoyancy force, 
부력이라고 하죠. 부력 한글로. Right? It's the basically a force exerted by liquid when people is, people is immersed in a liquid. 오케이, okay, so if you look at here, volume and surface area are two physical parameters that are involved in machine design. Okay. So if we let L, the linear dimension of a solid, we'll have volume as a function of L cubed and the surface area as a function of L squared. Okay. Okay. So if we do a surface to volume ratio, or we do surface over V, then the unit is L over 1. Okay. And the buoyancy force, right, is proportional to the surface over volume. Okay. If it's heavy, right, if it's heavy, if it has a mass, and if the mass the density is higher than water, then this will submerge. 물에 가라앉겠죠, 그죠? Right? So this volume is fighting against this buoyancy force. However, when you have a high surface area, right, this buoyancy force increases as your surface area increases, right? That is why when we dive or when we are swimming, we expand our body as much as possible so you can beyond or you can stay on the water surface okay so this s over v right is proportional to the buoyancy force right okay so if you look at here the elephant has surface to volume ratio about 10 to the minus 4 so it is very small however the dragonfly 잠자리 has 10 to the minus 1. So it has about 1,000 times higher surface to volume ratio. So that is why this dragonfly can fly and the elephant cannot. Right? So everything, so, so this buoyancy force will happen to any structure that is touching the water. Right? And the size matters. Surface area matters and also the volume matters. Right. So, so, yeah, so this can happen to everything, right? Electrostatic force, uh, uh, um, uh, again, heat conduction, like, like everything. Okay, so um, there is also scaling in MEMS. Okay. So I believe that you guys have seen the projector, the beam projector. Okay. The beam projector, right? What the, the, the working principle of this beam projector is that there are many micro mirrors inside this beam projector. Maybe I'll show you the picture. Give me a second. Uh, Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find a good, um, sure, I'll, let me, give me a second, give me a second. Okay. okay, so if you look at here, So what we are actually seeing, right? The beam projector has Okay, maybe I'll just use this. The beam projector, right? It has these mirrors. Right? So this mirrors, like if you look at here, this one right here, right? It rotates, it slightly moves, right? It rotates a little bit. And there is this 
uh, optic sources, and this mirror reflects that light into the specific positions. So this mirror, there are thousands, uh, ten thousands, hundred thousands of this mirror in this single chip. If you look at here, like in this single chip, there's this mirror, and what it does is it reflects the color of light into the specific position. Okay. So these, so let's say three mirrors, they reflect these three RGB color, right? And by controlling their angle, they can control the amount of RGB, the the, the mixture ratio or the uh, yeah the proportionality of this RGB, and they are shooting at one pixel, right? So there are like thousands, millions of pixels, so you'll need a lot of micromere. So yeah, so this is the, the concept of beam projector. And if you look at here, uh, yeah. so this is the beam projector. You can think this is a micromere. This was a micromere. And we use this electrostatic force to rotate this mirror. So you are changing this mirror angle. Okay. The torque required to rotate something is proportional to the moment of inertia. 아마 고등학교 때 배우셨죠, 그죠? 물리 시간에 배웠을 겁니다, right? The moment of inertia along y-axis for this case. And if you go back to your uh, high school textbook, you can find out this equation for moment of inertia in yx, y, uh, uh, moment of inertia in y direction, yy. And the function is 1 over 12 times mass of the mirror and also the width of this structure. Okay. So if, even though the mass is same, if the structure is very long, the mass is same, but with this smaller, you can say, oh, the moment of inertia is much, much smaller. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, let's say, oh, what is the volume of this mirror? Volume of this mirror is, uh, the mass of this mirror is volume times density. Okay. The volume is product of B, C, T, and density is given, it's material property. Right? So if you rearrange this equation for moment of inertia, you can write down, oh, 1 over 12 times mass times width of squared, it'll equal 1 over 12 rho B, C, cube T. So you can rearrange like this. If we do 50% reduction in every direction, that's saying all these dimensions, B, C, T, is reduced by 50%, right? Then what happened will be that, oh, then the equation, this one will become 1 over 12 rho times, oh my God, B over 2 times, uh, C over 2 cubed times T over 2, like that, right? And this will become 2, 8, 16, 2, 1 over 32 times original volume. So what I'm trying to show you here is that, oh, we just reduced the size by half in all direction. However, the torque reduces by 32 times. Okay. So this means that if we can make this mirror very small, but, but small, smallest possible size to reflect this RGB color, right we can increase the pixel of the display 
right? So that is good. But also another thing is that it'll require much, much less energy to rotate the mirror. So you can actually save a lot of energy. Okay, so this was the case for um, uh, the micro mirror example. So let's see, let's look at here. I have mentioned the gravity. Okay, so let's look at here. So this is the beam. You can think this as a like a suspended uh, uh, diving, uh, diving board. 수영장에 가면 이렇게 다이빙 하는 거 있잖아요. 뭐 그런 것도 있을 수 있고, right? You can extend this. 한국말로는 외팔보라고 하는데, it's like a cantilever, right? Uh, extended cantilever. For a given length of L. Because of the gravity, right, this there will be force acting down because of this gravity, and that force will induce this deflection. Deflection. 원래 밑둥의 높이와 끝단의 높이의 차이, that is called deflection, right? And this deflection can be written as 3, time, three over 2 times the density of the board, density of the struck beam, times gravitation acceleration term, Young's modulus, Right, E is Young's modulus, Young Gesu, times L over H squared L. I mean, you don't have to really memorize this equation. I'm just trying to give you the example. 이 공식 보시고 막, 어우 나 이거 물리 수업인가? 어우 싫은데 막 이렇게 생각 안 하셔도 돼요. 그냥 단순히 간단한 예를 예시를 드리는 겁니다. Okay. So you can actually calculate this deflection just because of this gravity. So let's say, oh, if we keep this L over H the same, the person deflection, okay? The deflection divided by length. Okay? Well, let's see how this changes as a function of L. Then what you have to do is divide this function by L. So if you do it, it'll be 3 over 2 rho G over E times L over H times L because you're dividing with this by L, right? Again, this term is fixed. L over H is same. We are keeping this uh, ratio same. Then this becomes proportional to L. This means if you reduce this beam by thousand times, the deflection will also decrease by thousand times. So the relative deformation of two micrometer long beam will be one over thousand of two millimeter beam, right? So, so in micro or nano scale, structures appear to be stiffer against inertia forces. I mean, there is this gravitational force. But actual change in shape or structure because of this gravitational force is too small, too minimal, too minimal that we can easily neglect it, right? And so, so, and also, uh, it'll require much less energy to move these structures uh, in nano scale. Okay, so that is the scaling. So the other example is in microfluidics. Okay. So uh, I believe that some of you have heard this term Reynolds number for the first time. Basically, the Reynolds number is the dimensionless number which compares the 
uh, ratio between inertia force of liquid and the viscous effect of liquid, right? Okay. Inertia, right? If we apply force to the something, it'll move. Even though we remove that force, the structure will keep moving because there is term inertia force, inertia, right? Liquid is the same thing, right? If we use pump to drive liquid across this pipe or tube, right, liquid will keep moving. So that is the inertial movement of the liquid, right? And the inertia is uh, can be calculated using this term called um, uh, density times u is u is uh, the speed of this liquid flow velocity and the viscosity term can the viscous term can be calculated using this formation using the viscosity times liquid velocity divided by l squared okay so if you arrange this term you'll get oh the reynolds number is the dimensionless number that consists of density liquid velocity times length, okay, and also viscosity, okay. So when Reynolds number is low, lower than 2100, then we can say, oh, this flow is laminar, which means that if you put a particle here, you can expect its position and location after a certain time t. So basically, you can predict the behavior of this fluid using a continuous equation. So that is the laminar flow. Okay. There is turbulent flow. Okay. Turbulence. Well, 비행기 타시면은 지금 난기류 터빌런스로 인해 비행기가 흔들립니다. 안전벨트를 매세요. Right. The, the, the pilot says, hey, there we are we are in the in the middle of turbulence, so please wear your seatbelt, right? That is the turbulence. And this is the case when the Reynolds number is really high. Okay. In case we cannot really predict the behavior of this liquid. So it is very hard to use a continuous equation for to predict the behavior of liquid. Okay, so when you scale, so this is the density of water. If we have a channel that is only one micrometer, right, and flow is really low, and also viscosity of water is this, when we make this flow channel or this tube really, really small, the resulting Reynolds number is also very small. Okay. So this is what we are expecting, right? It's very, very small uh, uh, behavior. Okay. So again, so this is the Reynolds number, and there, and we can there is a, this big difference between turbulent and laminar flow. Okay. So the turbulent flow, right? And and see, well, 파도 혹은 시내가, right? You see these white bubbles, right? The here the flow is turbulent. In a car, right? When something passes at the very high speed, right? Train or car or, or uh, airplane, there is this generation of turbulence. 그래서 헬기 같은 데 옆에 가면 막 빨려 들어가게 되죠, 그죠? That is because there is this there is large turbulent uh, 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 flow generation, right? After uh, or near this car or bus or train. This kind of outburst, very uh, high energy explosion, right? They are also turbulent, right? Plane, it also generates turbulent, right? right? But if you look at into this, blood and blood capillaries or air and airway capillaries, they are very laminar, right? Okay? okay? So blood, right? We can predict, right? The behavior of blood. We can measure its pressure, we can measure its speed, right? Blood flow rate, right? 
So, right, we can also measure your lung capacity. 그죠? 건강검진 받으시면은 어, 들이셨다가 내쉬다가 이거 하시죠, 그죠? Right. So actually, I have some videos here. So this will be actually a um, short preview of what we will learn in next lecture. So this was the slide. If I go here, so here is this example of micro nanopolitics. So this is a micro channel, and now this green flow is introduced, and then they put red, and then they put yellow. Blue. Yeah. So if you look at here, this is micro channel. So flow here. Right, is laminar, and you can see they are not mixing. Right? So using this type of microfluidics, right, you can deliver many different liquids to different places using this single channel. So you can transfer different type of liquids using the single channel in microfluidics. Okay, and also you can control its flow direction very precisely using this technique. And also using this micro channel, this is water and this is oil. Water and oil does not get mixed, right? So this is video, but it's not working. But what it does is by controlling this microfluidic, uh, this oil, this water flow rate, you can control the size of the droplet and also uh, the formation, the shape of droplet. You can also make this very thin layer of water. You can make very small this drops. So using these techniques, right, you can precisely co uh, control the uh, size and also the amount of droplet and all these is possible using micro and nanofluidics. So this is has enabled many technologies called as lab on a chip. Right? So this is the uh, application of micro and nanofluidics and analysis and so so this is all these micro nanofluidics. If you drop your blood, blood will be driven by itself using this capillary force. 그죠? 모세관 현상으로 인해서 물이 용액이 자동으로 이렇게 이동을 합니다. So they go to different locations and you can do a lot of testing, drug testing or some biological uh, testing and so on. Okay. Okay. So this is the video. Um, I'll show you. So, so, so this will be the preview for the next lecture. This video gives you an idea of hydrophobic. Uh, 물이 젖지 않는 소수성. 뭐, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, right? So people are using the, this uh, nano, um, uh, nano uh, technology and science to change the behavior of this surface and using this hydrophobic coating. So let's see. So they have applied this coating to this brick and you can see it does not get wet and the water drops just travel. Oh, sorry.
영상 잘 보이시나요? 아, 네, 감사합니다. 오케이, okay, so I mean, I explain, I'll explain how this is possible in the next lecture, but it's basically based on uh, nanotechnology. So um, we'll learn about equations, how this is happening, right? So you can see there's a lot of these treatments. So this is glass. If you see, this part is hydrophobic. This part is hydrophilic. Right. So the liquid, right? It does not get overflow. So this is funnel. Right. It's fine. So this is plastic. Right. If if treated. Actually, the plastic remains very clean. So if you can make a structure with this type of microstructure or hydrophobic based on nanotechnology, then we can have, then we don't have to clean it, right? Because it does not get wet. The dust does not get attached, right? So this is concrete. And the treated one, that's safe. All right, this is the, 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 the cement tube. You can see that the cement does not get attached. It is hydrophobic. So, yeah. The one thing is that we will learn how this is possible, but to give you a preview, they coat this part with the microstructures or nanostructures, and that structure prevent the surface being from wet. But the one thing you can see is that, oh, that structure also changed the optical property of this boot. Right? Their color changed, their reflectivity changed. Right? So we will learn like how why this has changed as well, okay? So that is what we are going to learn in the next lecture. So in so please think about the small scale, right? For today, if you are walking around or if you are looking something, just look at something and think about the scaling, right? Think about how the same thing will change, right? If if this car changes or the the, the weight of car changes in half, what will happen to its uh, uh, like fuel efficiency, right? Or what will happen uh, uh, in terms of the, um, um, the uh, how long, uh, in, in terms of the acceleration, right? I mean, you can, so please think about this proportion and size relation. Also think about the scaling laws. And also, I mean, just think about it, okay? And by next Tuesday, come to class with one topic in micro and nano engineering that you want to learn. Okay, so that is also um, a cool topic that you can uh, 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 think of. Okay, so uh, give me a second. Yeah, so that's what I have prepared for today. Right, but I want to give you a short announcement. Okay, so this is the email I have got. Okay, so the email says, so this is the guideline for how to do the code, code share uh, lecture. Uh, the undergraduate, right, it's online for one month. Graduate school is online for um, uh, for one week. Okay. Okay. Uh, it says I have to online for one month 
because uh, because the, there are some undergraduate in this course, right? So, I mean, I'll keep this online lecture following the school guide, but I mean, after one month, if everyone agrees and want to have the offline lecture, we can have the face-to-face -face lecture. And actually to make sure that um, uh, minimize the risk, I have reserved the, uh, the large lecture room at E7, not in our department, but the seminar room and E7, the large room, which can handle about 200 students. So I hope uh, we can have the face-to-face -face lecture uh, after one month, okay? Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, that is what I have prepared for today. Um, uh, how was the lecture? I mean, am I speaking too fast? Or, 어때요? 제가 너무 빨리 말하나요? 아니면은 뭐 불편한 거 있었나요? Any comments? Any comments or opinion about the lecture? Any suggestions? 장원 학생 거기 있죠? 네, 알겠습니다. Okay, well. Okay, then I'll think that as a very positive respo response. Okay, so yeah, uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend and also a very ha safe weekend. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Uh, yeah, and I also heard that the Monday is the holiday because it's our school anniversary. So for those who's planning a exciting weekend, long weekend, please be safe. Then I'll see you guys next week. Tuesday at 1 p.m. and this LMS system, okay? All right, guys. Have a great day. 좋은 하루 보내세요. 안녕히 계세요. 감사합니다. 네. 민영 학생, 전영, 홍주, 기호, 오, 지우, 예린, 세이. 네, 지훈, 네. Cherish, 스가초, 현석, 도윤, 다 감사합니다. 정주 학생, 감사합니다. 소영, 수일, 네, 다 감사합니다. <웃음> 네. <웃음> 네, 오케이. 바이바이.